The idea of village plans is you're building residential and you're building employment in the same area, um, and that you can internalize some of the trips to help alleviate some of the, um, you know, cross town trips. Yeah. We, we hope that happens, right? I mean, um, Santana Row could be, we hope, is going to become this office center, right? And um, it would make sense to have more residential in that immediate area where people wouldn't necessarily have to drive to Mountain View, right? I mean, listen, we could continue to build a ton of homes in, you know, South San Jose or the Evergreen Foothills or, you know, places where we don't want to build that because we know that those residents who just have to travel 30 miles to Mountain View or Palo Alto or wherever, right? Why not put the homes where the jobs are? But I acknowledge that it's scary and that not everyone is happy about it. Yes? You know, the market's gonna have a correction here, I think, in the next 18 months. Okay. Due to construction costs are ridiculous. Right? They're tough, they're rough, um, yeah. With architecture is being done differently. Um, it's hard to get laborers now. Yeah. To build a product. Most these laborers can't afford to live where they live in the set and other areas. Right. Can you comment a little bit about the affordable housing crisis? And I'm seeing more projects that are you know, that were done five years ago that are actually going to be built here in the next couple of years. Yeah. Um, there's more projects I've ever seen that have been titled for a long time. It's still going to be a major crisis with affordable housing. That's always really the key component to the, to the economy to staggering. Which yeah. It already is slowing down. Oh, yeah, it's rough. So. Uh, I know our housing department has been really focused on trying to help find locations for the Measure A affordable housing money to go uh, into building new uh, deed restricted units, right? So that, as we know, voters approved that bond to create some money um, to build about 4,000 units countywide. Um, you know, that should do something. It's not going to solve the problem and the tax. You know, there's some concern that the tax reform plan um, could kind of disrupt the tax credit market that has been really valuable to help affordable housing projects get built. So there's a lot of uncertainty about what that's going to mean to our pipeline. We have a ton of affordable housing um, development plan in San Jose. Our housing department is focused on finding the funds to get it built. Those are complicated capital stacks and they're assembling money from all over the place. Um, San Jose also, to the chagrin of some home builders, right, has lately increased the um, costs related to affordable housing impact fees to raise revenue for um, affordable housing projects, right? And so obviously there's debate about whether that helps or hurts, um, but that's kind of where the city has gone to try to help find money. The mayor's housing plan that's gotten some press lately, you know says we want we need to find a way to build 25,000 units in the city near term other cities i think are like also hearing the message that they need to loosen up on getting housing built now while the iron is hot hopefully we have a little longer than 18 months to get projects financed we're going to need to build so much housing in the valley to actually make a difference right in supply and demand and there's this uneasy relationship between Developers need to have a rent number that makes their project financeable, and the communities need to not be, you know, priced out of the valley. And that's kind of a rough balancing act. Does anybody have the answer to that whole? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Can I just say a few things about downtown, and then I'll, I'll shut up and do question stuff? So, because um, I, you guys are like me, you're all data, data junkies, and I just wanted to share some fun metrics on downtown. There's a lot of interest in downtown, thanks to, largely to Google, but other stuff too. This is like the most interesting chart in, in my universe. So this is um, uh, uh, vacancy, this is rents, the lines are rents. And you can, this is the year 2000. Um, and you can kind of see in, in our downtown class A market, we had this amazing, very short time of insane um, rent growth and basically no vacancy and we basically have never ever been there again right and we're not there now but the my message is the trend downtown has been really really good um, you can see we're at about 10 percent 
vacancy, we're a little over 10% now, um, vacancy in the class A market, and rents are fine, asking rents are finally kind of cracking $4, which is not great if you're a tenant with your lease coming up for renewal, but it is great if you're a tenant looking to get out of Palo Alto, but still have access to Caltrain and some cool amenities. Um, and so I highlight that because this other chart shows our building base over time. And you can see basically since 2009, when River Park 2 was built, we have not had any new um, office construction in San Jose. Adobe will change that, but that's an owner-user project. This is not. Um, oh, oh, there's no owner-users in this building base. And so we're a really small market. We're about 8 million square feet with Class A and Class B in downtown. And my point is, you know, when you look at this and you look at this, you know, someone needs to build an office building downtown for, for multi-tenant, right? Because we have requirements that come in that we can't facilitate a space downtown because there's just no space. Um, especially when you're looking at contiguous blocks of, of nice class A space. And so, you know, it's kind of a good news, bad news story. You know, we actually don't have, except for um, the Deardon project <coughs> that TMG is doing, we don't actually have any one looking to do new office entitlement right now downtown. Um, and that's where this comes into play. This is a trend we've seen over the last 18 months, which is some um, really kind of forward thinking, interesting investors with, with well capitalized partners come in and buy some of these tired, older, but really kind of interesting buildings if you, if you get creative about it, to totally transform them into cool um, office space. And so this corner, this area in the historic district downtown, you all know this building, right? Kirk Kozlowski owned it for many years, sold it to Lyft Partners maybe two years ago. It's now under construction. I actually like this design for the facade. I don't know if you guys like it. Someone said it looks kind of like um, a solo cup. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think it looks super fresh. Um, this. Uh, this recently sold to some really interesting investors. They, they're going to turn this into, well, their goal is the Bank of Italy building, which is one of our historic important buildings. Bank of America's predecessor was, that was kind of one of their early offices. They want to make this a net zero office building um, and just do a ton of stuff to it. Same thing with um, the, the Walgreens Tower here, which is nearly empty. You know, this stuff is all, this building is in contract, the Hank Coca's uh, furniture building. And so, you know, there's, on the one hand, I'm saying, you know, there's not a lot of um, new office downtown, which is true. And yet, this stuff is all kind of in this little cluster, these couple of corners downtown. And it could really be a cool little play for either a single company that's got, like, vision um, think of what Salesforce did in San Francisco, or even Amazon did in South Lake Union in um, Seattle, or you know, for individual companies that want to come in um, and get something unique. So, a little bit on kind of w why we think some of these that that uh, renovation trend is happening um, is obvious. You guys all kind of know about this. We've talked about it, but there are challenges to kind of bringing downtown to its full potential. It's hard to assemble land downtown. You have conservative landowners in many cases who've owned properties for ever and kind of have a low basis and maybe it's generating revenue and they're fine to sit on it. Um, it is an untested market, right? No one's built new office for, for a while. Um, and there's plenty of options throughout Silicon Valley, let's be honest, right? If you want um, class A office space, we can find it in the, the threes in North San Jose or Great America Parkway. Um, someone mentioned construction costs are insane. <clears throat> this is true. <laughs> and um, if you come downtown, you have to think through parking, right? That's not something you, tech, you usually have to think of in suburban markets. So all things to think of, right? <clears throat> and if you ever have clients that want to do something downtown, have them talk to us. We can work through those issues. Um, Good news story downtown on the residential front. You know, San Jose has been kind of focusing residential investment interests downtown for a while. And so these are some numbers 
<coughs> that we have in terms of what's going on there. I wanted to mention, um, I do want to talk just briefly about the Google situation. So um, what is going on with Google? We're like still really early in this, this process, uh, which is going to go on in two phases. There's the, the land sale phase, right? So, so Google is in negotiations with the city of San Jose as the lead agency that's kind of representing city-owned uh, uh, city real estate and real estate that's owned by the successor agency to the redevelopment agency, which is kind of a different ball of wax. It includes other, other um, agencies, right? And so um, next month, we expect to be going to the council with kind of a sale price for that land. Um, and that will kind of kick us off into the next phase of this process. Um, and, and also, we're going to get going on this community engagement process as well. That's going to involve, you know, 35 um, kind of representatives from different groups um, and stakeholders. This land sale process is about a year process expected to be. This is something different. This is a development approval process, right? Your entitlements for a project. We don't have a project yet. Right, so there's no, there is no Google project. There's um, kind of the the hope that we'll get there, and that's about another year process. Um, hopefully, assuming we get there, everyone is very positive about this. But it's, um, you know what, it's an this stuff is complicated. There's a lot of different um, parties involved. Um, there's public land involved. There's a lot of stakeholders, and the community engagement piece is super critical. And the city's very serious about making sure there's enough time for you know, all stakeholders to kind of have their say and their input. Um, and so you know, when you're out talking to your clients about what's happening um, in San Jose with respect to Google, you know, feel free to contact me, contact us for updates on where we are. Um, we're all very optimistic that a deal's gonna get done. Um, but as it stands right now, you know, there is no deal, and it's a long-term process. So, so keep that in mind. We've seen some sort of sense that prices are being elevated elsewhere downtown in anticipation of, of Google, and um, you know this is a very long-term kind of thing. What, this, what we've said publicly is that um, assuming we get there, Google is, like, is looking to develop and actually build their project um, kind of coordinated with BART, which is not slated to be um, completed in San Jose, in downtown until 2026. So, right, so that's a long time. Or is it? <laughs> you have a question, yeah. Yeah, right. It's a, ways, it's a ways away. We're in the exclusive negotiating agreement So that's where we are. But we're, we will soon be getting to the next phase, which is um, the sale. Yeah. So, how much for redevelopment? Oh my God, that's such a good question. Yeah. So do you guys should all be kind of monitoring? Yeah, so the question was, um, how much redevelopment agency land is still out there looking to be sold? Um, that was like my favorite story for the business journal was following all those sales. Because they're just so fun, like weird parcels that have like no street frontage. Like, what are you gonna do with that? Uh, but there's some good stuff too. Um, so there's a, if you go to the website sjredevelopment.org, there's a disposition schedule that lists when they're taking um, properties out to the market. And so, um, you know, a lot of the good ones have been sold by now, but, you know, it's as good as you make it, right? If you find something you can be creative with your use or it fits some kind of niche, um, it could be really interesting. I mean, there's some people that have bought stuff for parking, um, you know, there, there might be some interesting stuff in there left. So look at sjredevelopment.org. You know, it is dwindling, is what I'll say. Um, I wanted to say really quick, uh, I was asked the question, what is the tax 
um, bill mean for San Jose? Um, and I talked with our budget director about this question. And the like, really kind of unsatisfying answer is we don't really know yet what it's going to do to the bottom line. And there's a few reasons. One of them is, you know, um, for one thing, San Jose doesn't get much money from the federal government directly in terms of federal transfers. It's a couple um, million dollars. Um, and so, you know, if that were to go away as a function of, of the tax bill or the budget, um, you know, it's, it's not like it would be the, a, a fatal strike on San Jose. There's some um, more kind of up in the air stuff that we have to see how it shakes out as well. One of them being, you know, will the um, will the reduction in the mortgage interest, or excuse me, the state and federal tax deduction allowance, mm -hmm. will that lower property values in high cost markets, and will that trickle down into lower property tax revenue for cities? that's like a potential impact that's negative, right? On the positive side, you know, could Trump, Donald Trump's tweets <laughs> about the tax bill kind of increasing investment, right? Could that be true? And would, you know, could that, cre you know, could Apple do something cool in San Jose because of that? I mean, I don't know, right? It's, it's there's, let's be objective and say, we don't know yet. Um, so that's, Kind of the best answer I have for you, and I'm, I'm sorry I don't know more. The city has not done kind of a, a write-up or an analysis kind of with actual numbers on what this means. I think we're just going to have to kind of see how it, how it shakes out. Um, so that's the best update I have there. Yeah. Just a quick thing on, on downtown because you showed all the closings. There's there's been a lot of activity downtown the last couple months. Yeah. I mean, River Oaks Tower just sold a dip for 268 million. Closed a couple of weeks ago. 75 East Santa Clara just sold a couple weeks ago about mm -hmm. 27 million dollars out of New York. And that's you know that's 400 million dollars in deals right there. There's a couple other big ones closing here in the next couple of weeks. Um, so downtown is very vibrant right now. There are people that are very optimistic about downtown. Yeah. And there's also people that are skeptical. There's still a lot of apartments right. people right now because people have the rent control in place. There's going to be more stuff on the market that people want to buy because of Google. Remember, we've been talking here for another eight years. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there's going to be a lot of things going. They're going to come in for all these things, but um, it's going to be a few cycles before this happens. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And why do you? And what's interesting is those those that record setting for San Jose deals, right, for office assets, are still you know much lower than deals in um, you know higher uh, cost markets, and they're still below replacement cost. And so, you know, I think there's something interesting there that, have, that connects to why we haven't seen new office construction, right, which is, has to do with cost of, uh, why we, cost of construction. So, hopefully that, you know, changes soon. I mean, there's only so many assets to buy downtown, and at some point someone's gonna have to um, take the plunge and actually build something. So hopefully that happens soon. Yo. So since we all don't represent Google when it comes to housing and office, what can we do when we deal with what's happening right now is we see when you have a project and you have say 200 apartment units and it backs up against some Santana Road piece and then there's four residential homes, those four residential owners can kill the project and take it down from 200 or 150. How do you? Buy them out. Buy them out. You know, um, San Jose, you know, you're, you're right. It's an issue. And so um, if you look at what the, that project um, that Sarah Shree just did on South First Street, the Pierce, which is like seven stories at the front, and then it, it backs up to a single family neighborhood. They kind of stepped it down in a way that really was attractive. Now, they had the land area to do that because the parcel was deep enough. And you don't always have that. Um, but cer you know, certainly neighborhood compatibility, right, is something that comes into play in the entitlement process. Um, and I think neighbor, neighbor outreach is important. I remember doing a story on this 
and talking with Summerhill about how they got some of these projects approved on El Camino Real, which as you know, backs up either very shallow lots and it backs up to single family in, in many cases. And the um, developer told me, you know, they spent hours in these people's homes trying, you know, they changed their project for them, you know, working with them. And I think there's a way to do it if you have, um, you know, the right approach to community outreach. But you never know. I mean, what, you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's rough. And we're going to see more of that because, you know, the San Jose is not growing out. We're going in. And that means when you're redeveloping these older centers or um, pieces that are ripe for intensifying, you're going to have neighbors. You know? What other questions do you guys have? We still have like five minutes. <laughs> park, you, you know, it, see, it seems to me want to get rid of the park, and people say, "How much? Where am I going to park?" And I think, what to that spot? Like, getting rid of parking seems like a, you know, it's great to say, tell everybody to take a train, but I know somewhere else they're in a car. <laughs> I know. I think it's rough. So, and we'll, so see, and we have stringent parking requirements in many cases. Down. To, so we have a couple cases where the city will reduce a parking requirement. Right. One is in downtown. And um, another one is if you're in a certain radius of tr uh, transit stop. Um, and so aside from, from those situations, you, you have pretty strong parking ratios. I'm dealing with this right now, trying to help a guy come downtown or come to uh, kind of the Cambrian area and we're looking at his parking requirement and it's, it's just rough. So it's, I would say it's not true that we are you know, throwing out the parking requirement. Now, some people would like us to, right? They would like us to have no parking. We have approved a few projects that do not, I think one or two, that are taking advantage of some um, of our provisions in the village plans that allow um, very, very, very reduced parking. And there's one in particular in um, kind of the Midtown area. I will say it's gonna take one or two of these projects to get built and for the earth to not come apart <laughs> and dragons to fly up from underground for people to kind of think about whether this could work, right? But I'm, I'm with you. I mean, we have to be realistic about parking. Um, at some point, who knows? In, in 15 years, if self-drive, if, if our sexy velo dine in South San Jose, right, perfects this technology and we have these self-driving cars all around and nobody owns cars, maybe we'll be able to get rid of parking requirements all together and hope neighborhood groups will be fine with it. So, um, in our industrial group meeting this morning at Collier, we were brought up that there was a development approved on park for a six-floor, eight-story That's the one. No parking. It had very, very reduced, or I don't know if it was zero parking. There might have been a, a few spaces, but that is true. That project, I think it was, um, it's called Montgomery 7. That project worked with a group out of Oakland called Transform, which helps developers figure out how to put together trans, uh, transportation reduction plans or something to come up with a package that could make a difference um, in terms of the building's design and the um, transit um, uh, uh, accessibility and re uh, free transit passes for residents and, and everything else. I think that site could work without parking because I think you do have a lot of people who either work downtown, work at um, uh, San Jose State, um, and might take Uber and Lyft everywhere. I talk to, so one of my jobs is corporate outreach for the city right. and talking to uh, companies about, you know, their, what's working, what's not working in San Jose. And I always ask them how they get to work and how their employees get to work. Some of these sea level types are not, like, they don't drive. This guy who works downtown, he, um, he runs a company called Mota, which makes a drone. And he, he lives at Santana Row, he works downtown. He takes an Uber every day. Now he could take the 323 bus, which is a very nice bus, has free Wi-Fi, but he doesn't. Because he doesn't want to ride with the bus people, right? I do, I take that. Um, 
let's give that project a chance. Was that a pro is that project uh, for sale or? Those are rentals. I believe those are rentals. Okay. It may make more sense for rentals for, but I'm still yeah. thinking that those people aren't should have a car. I mean, it's you're skeptical, and I hear you. Yeah. You know, absolutely, I get it. I have a two part question. The first part is that I have I'm a banker and I have financed a couple of tenant improvement for companies that were in manufacturing in Taiwan, but they are building the assembly here in San uh -huh. Jose. Oh, great. Just to get Good. the tax credit and the meeting the minimum requirement for to be called U.S. manufacturer and oh, okay. qualify for the you know better tax situation. Okay. Uh, do you see that driving the more industrial market a little bit? And the second part is that, and that's amusing, it, everything that we talk about in Silicon Valley is driven by the tech companies. Yeah. So it leaves venture, com venture capitalists, unusual companies, and those companies finding, paying $4 a lease or hiring more people or more development. And when that tech world is also a cycle, and eventually it's all going to, you know, kind of like. Well, so let's start with that, that last question, right? So. That's why San Jose needs and is keeping a diversified economy that is not solely dependent on VC funded tech. That would not be smart. We don't want to be um, hitting the skids if everything, you know, if the floor drops. San Jose's um, labor force is very diverse. We're not all tech workers, right? We have a very, and now manufacturing is oftentimes very connected to tech, not always. We have a strong manufacturing sector. We have a strong construction sector, um, and you know professional services. Thanks to downtown, so I think we're well positioned for kind of the ups and downs going forward. Um, but yeah, we have exposure in the valley all over to the whims of the tech world on manufacturing and kind of onshoring assembly. We've had some conversations with some groups that are talking exactly about what you're saying. 